Hello and good evening once again. At dawn here. Uh, I thought I'd try something new yet again. With it being pre-Halloween weekend, I thought I'd give my hand a try at live video commentary of a movie. And so I had to pick a public domain movie, so I tried to pick the most fitting one as possible. So what I went with is 1968, George Romero's original Night of the Living Dead. You gotta love that music soundtrack. A little bit of organ, a little bit of theremin. So right there we get to see some thanks. They give some credit to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This uh, who was actually shot in Pitch Pittsburgh on a shoestring budget and um, I think it paid off pretty well in the box office, if I'm not uh, incorrect. I believe about 11 or 12 million in its uh, run in the box office. So on a budget of, I believe around $100,000, that's uh, quite an achievement. And this is the one that started it all in terms of zombie movies. If, you, if you're from a younger generation and you like The Walking Dead or fear The Walking Dead, this is what started it all for zombies. There wouldn't be a zombie genre underneath the horror umbrella if there wasn't this they movie. They ought to make the day the time changes, the first day of summer. What? Well, it's 8 o'clock and it's still light. A lot of good the extra daylight does us. Now, we've still got a three-hour drive back. We're not going to be home until after midnight. Well, if it really bugged you, Johnny, you wouldn't do it. You think I want to blow Sunday on a scene like this? You know, I figure we're either going to have to move Mother out here or move the grave into Pittsburgh. She can't make a trip like this. Oh, I don't know that she can. Is there any of that candy left? So here we have one of our main characters and Barbara with her brother, I Johnny. You know, I don't even remember what the man looks like. Johnny, it takes you five minutes. Yeah, five minutes to put the wreath on the grave and six hours to drive back and forth. Mm -hmm. Mother wants to remember, so we trot 200 miles into the country and she stays at home. Well, we're here, John, all right? Back on. Oh. Uh, ladies and hey, gentlemen, good. we're coming back on the air after an interruption due to technical problems. Pretty nonchalant about the radio signaling dead and then coming back on, but uh, it was a different time period in the 60s. Maybe they were less concerned about things like zombie invasions. There's nothing wrong with the radio. Must have been the station. Which row is it in? sleep on the time change. I think you complain just to hear yourself talk. There it is. Johnny is such a nice guy. Really helpful to his sister, Barbara. Can't take the time to visit his, uh, his father's gravesite. It's an inconvenience for him. I wonder what happened to the one from last year. Each year we spend good money on these things. We come out here, and the one from last year is gone. Well, the flowers die, and the caretaker or somebody takes them away. Yeah, a little spit and polish, you can clean this up. Sell it next year. Wonder how many times we bought the same one. Come on, Barb. Church was this morning, huh? <laughs> what a 
What a dick. Not a very nice guy. Hey, I mean, praying's for church, huh? Come on. I haven't seen you in church lately. <laughs> well, there's not much sense in my going to church. Do you remember one time when we were small, we were out here? It was from right over there. I jumped out at you from behind the tree, and Grandpa got all excited, and he shook his fist at me, and he said, Boys, you'll be damned to hell. <laughs> Remember that? Right over there. Was just as nice when he was well, a kid, apparently. You should really be scared here. Johnny. Well, you're still afraid. Here comes one of those more... Stop it now, I mean cl it. The more classic lines from the movie. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Stop it. You're ignorant. They're coming for you, Barbara. Stop it. You're acting like a child. They're coming for you. Look, there comes one of them now. He'll hear you. Here he comes now. I'm getting out of here. Johnny. Definitely one of the more iconic scenes from the movie, or more well-known. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Oh, no. They're coming to get you. Johnny actually is a nice guy after all, comes back to save his sister. I don't know how much that's going to help, but he needed that thing. Look at the angled camera work. Definitely a different time period. But horror movies thrive on that sort of thing. Inverted camera lens, at, camera angles, mood and atmosphere. That's what this music is all about. Music, mood, and atmosphere. That's what carries it. The special effects are not really there, but uh, the atmosphere and the mood more than enough to uh, keep me interested. There you go, you're gonna be safe in the car. Zombie will, won't be able to get in there. It's like a bank vault. It's a little telling in terms of its limited budget here that uh, the zombie's taking quite this long to get in the car. You know, modern film, it would have been in about 2.5 seconds. The fact that it takes three, not one, not two, but three shots to break over the brick is even more of an indicator. They're just trying to fill screen time. So there are some limitations in this movie. I'm not going to argue that. It's budget for one. It's a bare script, really. It has a thin script, but uh, like I said, what it did for the horror genre and zombies, especially after the fact, um, you can't discount Without it, we would not have any of the films or TV shows we have today. And even looking back, like I've seen it hundreds of times, so the effect on me is limited, but it still kind of creeps me out, the idea of it, and the, the story behind it, and the pace that's set, the music, and how it sets the atmosphere and the mood it puts in. Definitely one that you still need to watch with the lights on. You have to uh, turn the lights off late at night. Light a couple candles, preferably in a jack o' lantern. sanctuary in this house. Has she? We'll find out. But I think one of the best themes that you find in these types of movies, and one that The Walking Dead currently in its iteration that is nearing the end is missing, is 
that feeling of isolationism. That's what it's all about. It's that feeling of isolationism. So I think uh, Romero, I believe, I'm pretty sure he took a lot of inspiration from um, the Richard Matheson book, I Am Legend, uh, which uh, a couple years before this got its first film treatment in another movie that I love uh, called Last Man on Earth with Vincent Price. If you haven't seen that, check that out. It's black and white. That's actually an independent film. This is an independent film, but that's actually an international film, uh, one that was filmed in Italy, which was a popular thing at the time. A lot of North American actors that couldn't get uh, A-list work in Hollywood were actually going over to Italy to either continue their career or make their name, make their name more in the uh, more in regards to the spaghetti westerns like Clint Eastwood uh, playing the nameless stranger in the. Uh, trio of uh, spaghetti westerns he did during that time. Good to have me early all the way. Like I said, we're still establishing mood here. The music just carries the pace of the film. And then we have the awkward camera angles to let us know that not everything is as it appears that the character is unsettled and so should the viewer be. I know that things like that are considered cliché or redundant nowadays and it's disappointing because it's a very enjoyable part about a movie experience about sitting down and enjoying a film is those indicators is those motivators that the directors would put in in terms of the camera angles and the music cues and horror movies all we get now are jump scares and music cues that's all we get but we don't get the mood we don't get the atmosphere not as much as we used to Another horror cliche there, along with the car that won't start or key, no, no keys in the car, the phone that doesn't work. The phone's out, the phone's out of service. But the character has to try it like seven or eight times before they realize that, hey, that the phone's not working. And the initial zombie was not alone, apparently. Here comes. About to be introduced to our other main character. Who we have here is Barbara, played by Judith O'Day, and there is our main character of the story, Ben, played by Dwayne Jones. It's all right. Don't worry about him. I can handle him. Probably be a lot more of them as soon as they find out about us. Gas. This pump out here is locked. Is there a key? We can try to get out here if we can get some gas. Is there a key? He plays the frantic character to a T. He plays it perfectly. I suppose you've tried this. Yeah, she could have easily told him that the phone doesn't work, but I guess he needed to try just for a sense of self comfort. Do you live here? So really, Barbara's character, this is what we see for the remainder of the movie. She's in like a state of shock or what you would refer to today as post-traumatic stress, stress disorder, PTSD. Because she doesn't really contribute much and doesn't really say much. Get out of here. Ben really carries the film from this point on. Or are we introduced to more characters? Maybe we better take some food. 
I'll see if I can find some food. Barbara again is lost. She doesn't know what we're doing. And Ben is just all business. He's looking for survival gear right now. So here you have the stark contrast of how you personally, not only as the viewer, but as a participant in that reality, would handle facing a reality such as this. What's happening? the Barbara we get for the rest of the film. Well, Ben tries to deal with reality, she just loses it. And you get a sense by the music and the lighting and the way the camera is angled that Ben's in real danger here. All, he's, all he has is a tire iron, I believe. This movie definitely is a child of the 60s. It's a child of its generation. It uh, is very independently made. Low budget, very artsy, not your typical horror movie of the time, which by the time the 60s had a world run, it was beyond like, the golden age of horror, and it was into like really schlock and exploitation. This, I really wouldn't count as an exploitation film, but it's definitely more of like an artsy. There's still the gore aspect along. It's still freaky AF, but uh, it has more of an art appeal to it. That uh, You can tell that Romero was probably right out of college, that sort of thing, or a couple of years removed from it. And um, learning as he went, pretty much learning on the job. He knew the tropes he wanted to go with, and he was just following them. But another aspect that I mentioned, it was the late 60s, and um, we were a couple of years past the civil rights movement. They were alive and well at the time, but even then it was super uncommon to have a black actor be your main character, and here we are, George Romero cast Dwayne Jones specifically, partially specifically, in that role because of that. I think initially he said he did it just because Dwayne was the best actor, and he is, he is a really good actor. In, in the role, but um, he said initially he chose it as more of, rather than playing it up, that Ben was being played by an African American, that they would not make a big deal out of it that way. Everybody would just, you know, be like, meh, an NBD sort of thing. But then after the fact, I'm pretty sure in more recent, uh, before his death, interviews Romero would say that uh, he wished he had played it up a little bit more. and. Um, made a bigger deal of it and I'm pretty sure Dwayne Jones said the same thing in interviews uh, Don't after the fact and closer, closer to his death Ben taking care of business and Barbara still Barbara Light them on fire and uh, keep those zombies away.
as much as there's a lot of music in this film we also get a lot of scenes that are quiet like this where we get to know the characters we get closer to the characters and we can feel that we're in that same situation get some more lights on in this house Apologize for the quality. This is not the remastered version. It's the downloaded version. That way I can use it as a public domain movie to change it uh, whichever way I want. Add my voice to it and just, I'll make it my own thing. And I hope you're enjoying it. Why don't you see if you can find some wood, some boards, something about his fireplace, something we can nail this place up. Again, Ben's all business. He's looking for ways to survive and Barbara's just kind of wandering around. Oh, God, I know you're afraid. I'm afraid too. But we have to try to board the house up together. Now, I'm going to board up the windows and the doors. You understand? We'll be all right here. We'll be all right here until someone comes to rescue us. But we'll have to work together. You'll have to help me. Now, I want you to go in and get some wood so I can board the place up. Do you understand? Okay? Okay? Does she understand? Really, does she? Or does she just do Barbara things? actually going to cut the video off soon. I'm going to make it into a three-parter. That way it's uh, quicker for me to edit and quicker for me to upload. So I'll, I'll hopefully be able to get it up online on uh, YouTube tonight. So all you guys, uh, you guys and gals, all my subs, and anybody who's interested in viewing can uh, check it out. Because we're about to have a shift in the dynamic of the, uh, of the characters, so it's probably best to cut it off here before it moves any further. So we'll just wait until Ben uh, finishes nailing the door to the wall and Barbara's just wandering around with like one piece of wood. Ben's all business and she's still kind of lost. But I guess she's kind of just coping. She's trying to cope with the situation, but uh, I'd hope they would have made her character a little bit stronger, a little bit more resilient. I know she saw her, her brother likely get killed and was chased by a bunch of flesh-eating zombies, but no, that's wrong. I want you to cut some nails. Pick out the biggest ones you can find. All right, so I will be back. Hope you enjoyed the video so far and I'll talk to you soon.